This will only be a quick video. There is a practice that you can do within the next five minutes that will drastically help your future relationships. I've just done it. I've just ended things with the girl I was currently dating because I've done this practice. On the left hand side of a double sided like notebook, write down what you want from your future wife. And I know this seems abrupt and stuff, but this is a really good message that I wanna to put to you first. And then I'll explain like the story and whatever afterwards. On the left hand side, just write down what I want my wife to be like and go through as much detail as you can and the, the categories that I've used is family, history, especially sexual past. That's literally one of the most important parts of history. Personality, friends, character, and anything else you can think of there. Write that down in, I have wrote this at the top of this page here, best case scenario. If you are an ambitious young man and you expect to become quite successful, quite driven, quite like, you know, a prize, then write down the absolute best case scenario. So you want, for example, other people will disagree and they'll say this is un unlikely, but you want your 10 out of 10 in all ways, right? Your physical, the, the character and everything like that. You want like that absolute best case scenario and it's just write it down with no filter on a private like piece of paper that no one can see because it you know it might feel a little bit cringe to write down certain details it might be feel kind of uncomfortable especially when like i think a really big part to talk about is the things which are quite controversial like her family her sexual history and stuff these are things that a lot of guys don't speak about a lot of guys don't think about and things like personality friend like her friends her network her character What's her values? The sense of humor, what she looks like, as much detail as you want. Mine was just one page. But then I, I did the next page then for the girl that I was dating. And I won't go into like too much detail out of respect for her, but like essentially it just didn't, it didn't match. And it made me realize that I was in this relationship more for the short term pleasure that is gained from having sex with a person and, and connecting with them. And you know, like the good feels of a relationship rather than the long term value that would come from a partnership, which leads to like literally, you know, 20, 40, you know, years of a relationship of children and, and marriage. I've changed a lot since my original red pill days. I'm no longer this guy who only craves like promiscuity and hooking up and you know, who values that. In, in fact, that's something I really like try to have tried to devalue in my life. It's been a long term project for me to not, not strive for the short term like hookups that the, the modern degenerate world gives to us. I understand if you don't want to do this. What I'm asking you to do here of like writing down this list of what your, you know, your like the, the wife that you want to have who would have your children. The idea is that once you write this down, you are now held accountable to stay single and actually stay celibate to not have sex up until you meet that woman. If you actually want to like, don't click away right now because this is gonna to start to make you feel uncomfortable. If you have watched hundreds of my videos, think of, think to yourself right now that this is a message I've decided to put out there to almost 2 million people, like subscribers and everything. Just think to yourself right now, if you have benefited from my videos before that I think this is one of the most, at least for a man like me, I think this is one of the most important lessons that you could get. Once you've written down and really cr clarified what you would want in your wife for you to maximize the success of your future family you would choose to stay single and to actually stay celibate because if you don't stay single if you get into a relationship with a girl who doesn't match that criteria if she matches the criteria then 100 percent okay go on and you know we could still make a mistake and stuff of course like you know what what you write down right now may not be objectively the universal truth of what would have been the best wife for you it's with your current awareness but it probably would be a good step in the future rather than just blindly going in using tinder and using instagram and everything meeting a girl and she's kind of cute and you know you guys have sex and it's kind of awesome and stuff before you blindly go and just think to yourself that if you did actually stay single you would one work harder because you wouldn't be distracted by any kind of relationship and two you will not be able to clear-headedly get into a relationship that you know is with a woman who is not your future wife because the only reason you would get into that is for the short term and you know for a fact that thinking about the short term does not lead to success you're on this journey, you're watching this kind of content because you want to be like a top tier successful man and it requires sacrifices. And this is the one sacrifice that I have so hardly struggled with. And you probably 
feel somewhat of the same. I understand right now, I can imagine like my YouTube analytics is dropping because people don't want to be held accountable to this. And it, you know, just tell us the five quick tips to get girls. But this is like, well, once you've gotten the girls, bro, once you, you're okay at attracting girls, which doesn't take that long, like get a six pack, make, make a little bit of money, get some confidence. You know, that's like a six to 12 month period, maybe a little bit longer. You know, you're getting into more social life and everything. But once you know how to attract girls, one of the things that you don't actually learn online is actually like, what is the ultimate best case scenario? We are not average guys who just want like some kind of mediocre relationship relationship or mediocre life are we you never wanted that if you did you never start consuming this kind of content before so that means that you want the best case scenario and we know for a fact that the best case scenario is being in a like strongly loving family and that family has to be in a marriage okay in the modern day there's so many people and i was one of these who say like no don't get married because you know the government's you know feminism and all this bro you know you can get married without the government actually being involved you know there's like religious mar marriages which aren't in part of like the government contract and maybe the government can maybe look at them when they're doing some bullshit but it's like you can act like if you want to maximize the success of your family and your children, it has to be through marriage. It has to be. And so then you have to start to consider, okay, who, what kind of person do you want as your wife? But also, how do you want to get into this relationship? Because the issue then is, you know, the, the common saying of like, don't turn a hoe into a housewife. The issue then is that if you pick a girl who's really like cool right now, who gives you a lot of pleasure right now, but you kind of know that she's, you know, you, you can take one look at a woman and know if she's your wife. You can, you genuinely can, right? You can take one look at a woman. Don't bullshit yourself. You can take one look at a woman and genuinely tell if she's wife quality or not. Don't bullshit yourself. You can, you can do this. And so when you clarify that actually she, yeah, she's obviously not, but you know, she's kind of cool, cool and everything. And so, you know, right now it's kind of good because I'm getting my dick sucked. In, you know what I mean, guys? And then all the fucking people online are like, yeah, Andrew says like, yeah, dick suck, yeah, oh, like a pleasure. Like you can go down that route. Many men have, I have. And what's interesting is that the men who seem to, to gain this extra level of consciousness swing about it in the opposite way and then tell you that actually that life is, that's not the successful life. Understand the sacrifice that I'm making here where I have hundreds of videos teaching you how to just attract girls on Tinder and everything, where I have a thousand dollar course that makes like five to 10K a month. Like, you know, it sells five to 10 copies per month, teaching you like how to attract more girls and how to fucking properly, how to hook up with girls and everything. Understand the sacrifice that I'm making to record this video for you. Because this is a message, this isn't abrupt. I know it seems, you know, unplanned and I didn't want to just write down bullet point for bullet point on a script to do this. I wanted this to be quite an emotional video. But I've been thinking about this for over a year. You know this. If you have been a true fan of mine, you know like the, the journey that I've been on, taking a step back from like the degenerate modern world around us and, and the biggest addiction that I've had, which is that of, of hooking up with these girls. That does negatively impact your future family. Do not listen to these men who tell you that it doesn't. Now you can swing things around. I believe I can. But that being said, when you consciously know that this is something that's bad for you, just like you do with porn, with video games, with junk food, what, what happened then? Remember that first time that you really clarified to yourself that video games no longer serve you, but then you kept on playing. What happened? It messed with your mind and it literally made you see yourself less. And how about porn? There was a point when you innocently watched porn, you didn't realize anything was really that wrong with it. It was kind of exciting. It felt kind of good, right? But then there became a point, probably about the time that you started seeing it all online about no fap and everything, that you really genuinely believe that it's bad for you and that you shouldn't do it and that, you know, it might give you some short-term pleasure, but it's bad for the long term. And then you carried on doing it for a little while. And how did it feel through that transition period where you knew this thing was bad for you, but you kept on doing it? You hate yourself. It feels like this, this hateful, demonic full-time job that's inside of you where you have to keep, every day you're almost saying to yourself like, I know this is bad for me, but I keep doing it because I don't respect myself. You start feeling shame and that's one of the worst experiences you can have. This is what happens when you become conscious that you're doing something bad, but you don't stop doing that bad thing. And the thing is more and more men are waking up that not only porn is bad for us, you know, that's, that's very clear, but that also short term relationships that are pretty much like literally just sexual, 
that they're also horrible for men. A lot of these guys online, and I've probably been one of them, kind of say that, yeah, they're bad for women, but they're not bad for men. If, if they're bad for women, then they've got to be bad for you, bro. A woman's just a reflection of who you are as a man. And so, or like, you know, you see online, everyone's saying, oh, there's no good women and everything, bro. The reason why is because you just attract what kind of woman that you are. You attract women similar to you. And so if you are down to have casual sex and if you're down to just have a little bit of fun and have pleasure, guess what, bro? So is she and she has and she will. And that's not the kind of woman that you probably would want to be in in a long-term relationship. Maybe your values are different and maybe you don't view a woman being promiscuous and getting fucked by other guys as like a negative thing. Some guys don't view that. I personally do. I, it personally is one of the most disgusting thoughts I ever get you know, just, just day to day of the thought of like a girl that I'm in love with and her doing anything sexual with any other guy. It's, it's literally the worst gut pe feeling that I ever get. It, it, this is bad to say. This makes me sound like a misogynist, but actually I think this is the real feminism. Femi you know, modern day feminism has convinced women to split their souls with random men who don't even value them. Modern day feminism has convinced women to split their souls because that's what happens when they have sex with a man with random men who don't even value them. And what I'm saying here, what I have said for a while, even though it sounds really misogynist, is that actually a woman should respect herself so highly that she only splits her soul with the best man. This is like real female empowerment. This is the kind of empowerment that betters women and men. And so for you, you know, that's a quick little tidbit for any woman watching this. But for you, the young man right now who's horny as hell, who also, you know, feels kind of lonely and everything. There is, there's levels to this. And I think the next level past the PUA red pill stuff of, you know, like just getting loads of girls and everything. The next level is realizing that you being a degenerate and degenerate is essentially you having sex outside of marriage and outside of for family is still hugely consequential for you. Hugely. A lot of guys have clicked away already and you're, you're hooked onto my words. Chances are, bro, as much as you're hooked onto my words and you can feel something's right, especially when I mentioned like, you know, like women sleeping around is something that disgusts me and you like probably thought like, yeah, actually me too. I'm not allowed to say it out loud, but yeah, me too. Like I don't, I don't want my future wife to have ever experienced sexually another man before. You can relate to this. This feels very important. And guess what's going to happen? Within an hour after watching this video, you're, you're slowly going to slip back into normal ways because to go onto this like new kind of journey and pathway that I'm, I'm kind of getting at here is going to require the sacrifice for of immense pleasure. And when I say the word pleasure, it makes it like obvious. It's like, yeah, we know pleasure is often bad, especially when it comes to something as intimate as like literally sharing your soul. And I'm not even trying to get like spiritual, but like genuinely, bro, genuinely, you should let me let me, let me show you this, right? This piece of tape. This is exactly how sex works. This is a piece of tape and it's nice and sticky, isn't it? And this is the first time that you have sex with someone. That tape is on really tightly right now. It's, it's on nice, isn't it? This is the first time you have sex with someone. It is a true bond. You have stuck together and then you split up because you had sex with this person and especially she had sex with you. Outside of marriage, outside of that commitment, outside of that serious commitment, because you know, we're just having fun, we're just young people, huh? go fuck around everyone. Huh? Modern day puppet master, matrix, whatever you want to call it, that is the message that we young people have been, you've been sold sex since you were like literally four years old, right? You know this. This, this couple that fell in love, that bonded, that had sex, but then didn't really do it in the eyes of God, didn't do it through marriage. Which, and those those reasons are important, by the way, because essentially it holds people together. If you, let's let's say you lose your, your virginity, you and the girl, in front of God, you, got, you guys get married first, whatever religion you want to be, absolutely fine, but just you get married first with all of your family members. You've both got good family members. Your families are both intact. Your parents are not divorced. You know, like this, this modern day, especially Western, but just in general, degeneracy is not part of you or her or your extended family, which means that literally all of your family members know that you have married her. All of her family members know that you've married and that now you, you, you guys are essentially going to start having children. That means that if you guys wanted to split up, there's such a like insane level of friction compared to you not going through marriage and literally just, you know, just dating and casually having sex. And that's what most people do. That's what seems cool. That's what I've done. And that this is what it's like. And then you split up and 
you're single again. You can't really see it on my hand, but there are some like, like, what would, what's the word? Chemicals or atoms or something left there. This, this piece of tape is not the same as it was five minutes ago. It's not as sticky, is it? Oh, but this other person, they look really nice. Oh yeah, we, we should have sex. Yeah. And sweet. Look, see, Hamza was wrong. See, you can have sex with people. It's no problem. But is this, this time right now, this second time, is this tape as sticky as it was the first time? You know this, imagine a piece of tape. It, it, does it stay the exact same level of stickiness if you just kept on putting it on and putting it off? No, in fact, it actually came off a little bit easier, but it, you know, it was still on there a little bit, like, you know, still quite well. But you know, you, you've had sex with two people, you split your, your soul with two people, especially for women, this is very important. And, and this is, again, this is the real female empowerment. Someone should actually start like saying this out loud and without fear of being called like any weird names, it's like, this is like empowerment for both men and women to value yourself so highly to think like, yeah, I am worth more than just this, just like, you know, another peel of the tape. Okay, the third person, you know, uh, at a party this time. So this one's just very quick. Okay, not much friction from that. Oh, yeah, yeah, rebound because that, that person wasn't nice. Okay, four. Oh, you know, five. Oh, 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 you girl, you should get Tinder. Oh, six. Oh, seven. Oh, eight. Oh, how about a night out? Let's go for drinks, guys. Oh, you know, it just happened. Oh, Tinder premium. Oh, oh you should try Bumble. Hinge is better, actually. How about that guy in the gym? That personal trainer? How about this? Oh. Huh. Why don't I feel the same level of connection? Why are all my relationships quite short these days? Why can't I be like that couple over there who I saw like, you know, the, the, the high school sweetheart and they got married at age 19. That's really weird guys. Like, why can't I be like them? They're just stuck on. But me, like every relationship that I get on, it feels like I've got one foot stepping away. 13. It's like, it's on a weird fucking side now. 14. 15. 16. 17. Oh, you know, uh, this was, um, fuck, let me, let me show you something, bro. On 17, actually, there was a really, really fun party and you'll never guess what I did. I, I got with two people at once. That was so fun, guys. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And this was the first time that it really didn't even stick. They'll stay like that. Because for them to, to peel back this, you know, th this, this is gonna stay like this. And guess what's gonna happen? You know, when, when this couple, we can imagine some like religious couple who have got based parents who told them like, no, 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 sex is actually really precious. Don't let this modern degeneracy convince you otherwise. What's gonna happen when naturally this couple start having a little bit of problems, as is natural, you know, with the male, female dynamics, polarity and, and, you know, stress and they're living together and they have like a little bit of stress. You know, they have like a big argument and it's peeling off there. What's gonna happen? Who are they gonna go to? Their family. They'll go to their family, they'll go to their religion, they'll ask God, and all of the above will tell them, no, no, see, like this is this is the way, like you don't, you know, you don't split up for any kind of problem. This is what you do, this is what you do. And so all of their family, and even the, the, the mighty hand of God comes down and presses it back on and says, no, 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 this is the way. Of course you're going to have some problems. And they stay stuck like this and they get to have children. Lots of children who see their parents together for all their lives, who see them actually still polarized, who sees their mother as feminine and their, their father as masculine as things should be. Is this not like the ultimate height that we should reach for more than just this? Like th this felt fucking awesome, bro. Ch like, you know, chasing this, this degeneracy and, and getting really good at sleeping with loads of girls. It feels like productive. It's, it's what I spent years of my life, like learning to master. And then I started making like literally tens of thousands of dollars, to, like teaching this shit. So it's like, wow, that's amazing, bro. I can't believe like just fucking bitches got me like this life. And guess what? 
this is you. This is you now. And then you really meet like such an actually like wife quality woman. And this is what you've got left to trade for her full role on untethered. Hopefully you're able to, you know, make, make what you've got left still extremely valuable, which I've got hope that I can. But just understand that there are consequences to your actions that not a lot of speak, people speak of. And one thing that I will say to you, even though, you know, it seems really crazy, but I think such an easy way to, to bring you onto my side, it might be too late. Like, you know, pretty much everyone's who essentially thought this, you know, being crazy is probably clicked off and probably you, you're on my side. But just in cases, there's anyone who's watching this thinking, wait, he's crazy, the sex isn't bad or anything. Just put it this way. We know that the normal average world around us is bad for us, right? We, we know this. And we also do know, like, you don't have to be a huge Andrew Tate fan or anything, but there is some kind of, like, matrix, some hidden message that's going on to essentially make people weaker, to make them more depressed. Like, we know this. If you've, like, started to go down that route of, like, thinking about how messed up the modern world is on purpose, how there's estrogenics in all the plastics that we use, how men are literally, like, like low testosterone inferts, like, you know, okay, the modern world's not really good for us, right? Does the modern world, or does it not, promote degeneracy? What is sold to you? Is it this? Is it this lifestyle of, of long-term decisions, delayed gratification, waiting till marriage to have sex? Is it, is it faith? Is it God? Is it family, community, church, mosque? Marriage? Children? Is this what's promoted to you from you know, every movie? Every day when you listen to a music video, it, you know, is some rapper there getting married? Or this is what they're trying to sell you. This is what they're selling you and we've bought it. Sex sells and we, we love to consume, we love to buy. We're on a buying spree, we are materialistic for sex. And this is what they sell you, all these dumbass, disgusting rappers talking about, oh, I've got bitches and everything. All the movies, the, the lifestyle, the, the TikToks, just society in general just keeps going down this, this degenerate phase. This is what you're left with. This is what you're gonna give your future wife or, or husband. Is this a fair trade? This little thing? Because, you know, like right now, you know, you're, you're just seeing this and you're maybe you're thinking like you've got some humility and you're thinking, yeah, actually, this does kind of somewhat represent it. Or, you know, you're just getting some ideas right now. But how do you feel when I tell you that when this is you, the person who's on your level is probably going to be somewhat similar? There's a level of beauty in that, that, you know, they've experienced similar things to you. But then the dark side comes when we know with pure data that these people have happier lives, that these people stay together much, much longer, in pretty much infinitely longer, that these people, especially when they met in a religious setting, in a church or a mosque, have the percentage divorce rate of about 4%. These people get divorced 4% of the time. These people at least 40, more like 50 these days. And of course, there's problems through the all of it as well. The more you, especially your wife is like this, the more likely she is to cheat on you. Every, you know, peel back that I just did, let me, let me show you right now for your wife's journey. Just because, it, you know, it, it's easy for us to, to say, so, I don't know, just this is interesting, right? So this is your wife and she was pure. Every time that she stuck herself and onto another guy, you know, metaphorically, and she had sex with them. Every time. One. Two. Three. Four. Every single time increases her chance of cheating on you by about 10%. In marriage. Every single time increases her chance of divorcing you by around 5 to 7%. When she has had a clean slate, the data that I've seen is just on women, by the way. I, I wonder what it's like for men, and I actually think it might not be as bad as women, but I certainly do think men who are like this also are worse in relationships. You know, it's so easy for us to just say, oh, you know, the rules are different, but you know, the red pill shit, but it's so easy to say that. That's the route to it being a degenerate. And that's also, but 
we need to discuss this, bro, because that's also a route to like causing more degeneracy. Like, you know, you can't just think, oh yeah, women are the problem. You know, women should stop sleeping around but be a male slut at the same time. That's what I've been for a long time. It, like, it's not about fairness, bro. I don't give a fuck about fairness, but I, I care about what is right. I care about, like, I like to think deeply. I like to, like, see the consequences of my actions. That's why I've become successful. You want to know, my, like, one of my secret tips? Literally, obsessively and autistically see the consequences of your actions deeply. You know, I weighed up buying a car two years ago for literally, like, 20-something pages of a journal. And literally, my final decision was, no, I will not get my driving license and I will not get a car because I know for a fact what that means is that it will increase my freedom to go to, like, a broader radius around my town and I will end up sleeping with more girls, which will take more time away from my business. That's like, you've got to see the consequences of your actions four or five steps in advance if you want to become successful and you want to become rich. That's a really good tip, bro. And so when it comes to being a degenerate as a man, when it comes to you as a guy sleeping around and you know, all these like little YouTubers are gonna react to this. Like, oh yeah, right, dude, just enjoy it. It's just sex, bro. Like, oh, you know, they're gonna do this. They're, they're probably at lo like lower le levels than us. They don't understand this shit. But when you do something like that, the first consequence is that it feels good for you. That's awesome. Probably feels pretty good for the girl too. But if you start seeing multiple layers of the consequence, you eventually realize that, you know, this, this rampant degeneracy around us, it's you. It's you, that girl that you've just been with who, who's all fucked up now. Well, you wear one of her sticks and that compounded into her getting the next one as well. And let's forget that. Let, let's just wipe the, the slate clean for a second and let's just think right now. We are young, ambitious men. What is perhaps the best route for us to go forward? I will not take any credit for this. This is from a YouTuber named Self Developed and his real name is David Hammond. He was actually a coach, like a mentor of mine for a little while before I went down a different path. And perhaps what the root is, we clarify what our, we want from our future wife, our family, the, the most important thing, right? You'd probably agree, right? Purpose and mission is, is, is you know, like the, the thing that we spend most time on that we think about. But if like one had to die off, You'd, you'd let your purpose die before you let your child or your wife die. Does that make sense? Like, family isn't, in a weird way, the priority day-to-day -day with our hours. Because our work usually is. But on your deathbed, you're going to wish that you were around your family and not your business colleagues. You're going to wish that you, like, literally, it, it's one of the most common wishes of people who are literally about to die, is that they wish that they just spent more time with, with their family. And literally all happiness studies, all self-fulfillment uh, studies, all say that the greatest joy of happiness is actually literally just family, it's social connection. You probably agree with this, right? Maybe right now, right now you're thinking, no, 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 my family you know, aren't really nice or something. I'm not talking about like your family, your dad or your sister or something. I'm talking literally, okay, your wife and your children. Your wife and your children are gonna be the most important people in your entire life once you get past like age 18 and you're you know, somewhat like old enough to be your own person compared to your parents. And so we should place anything that affects our future wife and children very highly. And we should think, okay, that's very significant. What could affect them? Now, of course, our self-improvement. The more we improve, the better our future children's lives are going to be. Literally, as much as like your diet, like, the, you know, the things that you eat, the moment, like when you impregnate your wife, whatever you've ate in the last few weeks significantly impacts your future sons or daughters' life. But people don't, like, I don't even know what to tell you. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, crucifer vegetables and steak or something that we should be eating. But, like, there's levels to this shit, right? There's, there's a lot to think about, right? And so if right now your ears have just picked up and you're thinking, wait, there's a, there's a diet? Like, I should probably be eating when I go to like, you know, get my wife pregnant in the future. I don't even have a wife. If you're, if you're literally getting almost excited at the thought of learning that, you should think, okay, I probably do value my future wife and children quite highly. And so one of the most important things that you could do is, is start that relationship in the right way and with the right person. Because right now your future wife is just some vague person, you know, this, this blacked out, like choose your character, not unlocked yet type of like, you know, thing that we've not selected just yet. The person that you pick to be your future wife is going to be the most important decision that you make more than any business decision, more than what college you go to, what career you choose. Literally, the woman that you decide to, to make into your wife is the most single most important decision you'll ever make. Shall we not spend a few minutes trying to break this down? And I certainly don't have all the answers. I'm certainly not some professional. I'm certainly not experienced. I don't have a wife. I don't even have a girlfriend anymore. I'm literally single, right? But I can just give you my mindset as of today on like the 9th of, what, what day is it? 9th of March or 8th of March. 
A friend of mine in Dubai, his name's Ahmed, I did a podcast with him, you may have saw this. He told me that statistic, that people in religious settings, especially who get arranged marriages, have a 10 times less divorce rate than people who get married for essentially in other ways, who get married romantically. Arranged marriages have a 10 times less divorce rate. You as a young man right now, you may not even be 25 years old. You might not even be thinking about your wife, but the thing is, why not? Because remember what I said before that it's the long-term decisions that make a man successful. Thinking about the short term is how we got into every single bad habit, isn't it? When we got into, into watching porn, we didn't think to ourselves that first day when we were like 13 years old, what's this gonna be like in 10 years? It was the short term, it's like, it feels good for this hour. How many times have I told you about instant gratification versus delayed gratification? Instant gratification feels good right now, but it often makes our life worse in the long term. Delayed gratification is when we're delaying it for the long term, but for the short term, it might not be as, as good. But what we're saying is, you know what? We're men. So if something doesn't feel good right now, it's like, we'll take that sacrifice. We'll take that pain because for the long term, that's how we become successful. Every big business, every su really successful person has been built on some like long-term goals and dreams and actions and sacrifices. You know this. So why don't we think long term when it comes to family? Why is that something that like even the, the based guys online, like for, a, for literally up until 20 minutes ago myself, that we all only thought short term with, which was like, yep, just focus on attracting her. Just focus on getting the girl. Just focus on getting more Tinder matches. That's all we've really spoke about online, haven't we? Oh, the good, the green flags and the red flags. And you know, just, just focus on getting her right now. You see these degenerates all over the internet. I'm, I'm pretty much one of them. It's just short term, short term, short term. And, and it feels good. And it feels like you probably have this like slight negative scare, like fearful thoughts right now of like what this means. Because your brain's starting to realize it's going to need to sacrifice something that's very pleasurable. It's going to need to sacrifice the short term. Just like you eventually successfully sacrificed porn, the short-term pleasure that comes from that, and video games and junk food and drugs. And quitting all of those, every single one was good for you, wasn't it? It didn't really feel good on the first day you were trying to quit, but then after a while, it's like, okay, oh shit, like my, my long-term baseline's way better. This, this is the life, guys. Just, just go, you know, you're saying it to your friends, just go through the first like two weeks of pain once you first quit a video game and you've got to adjust to real life or once you're taking a step back from weed or something. But after that, it's like you're at the long-term benefit. Now your life is just always better compared to the trajectory that it was going in, which was getting worse. You just had to experience some short-term sacrifice. This is like, I think this is the current scope of the dating advice online that I have personally not only consumed, but I have also created and sent out this message. That it's just the short term, that success right now equals attracting the girl, escalating and sleeping with her. But that seems like success, right? It, it does, but just hold on for a second and just think, okay, that feels really good. That feels like something to, to, you know, like to go for, okay? Like, you know, I get to sleep with this girl. That's awesome, right? But just first think long term. And when you think long term, naturally you'll think about family. And you can have a different family dy dynamic. No one's like, you know, forcing you that you've got to have wh whatever it is, right? You can have whatever like family dynamic that you want as long as it's like legal or whatever, right? But that would probably be the best case scenario to think about is, okay, think about the future family that you want. Think about the future wife that you want. And then realize that your actions today line up with that. That you can't just start to ignore what you're doing today and still think that you're gonna get that long-term goal. You're still gonna get that long. Bro, most people don't actually achieve their goals. Most people don't actually get into the happy marriages. Most people don't get into like happy, healthy families. Why? Short-term thinking. And you and I, I think we, we suffer from some feeling of like arrogance and narcissism and, and ego, a lack of humility that we, when we do a bad habit, we don't see it as bad as it truly is because we're not one of those. We're not a Jeffrey. We're not like one of those guys. But the truth is like, in that moment you are. And if there's enough of those moments, then you will end up like one.
and then we say to ourselves, no, but there won't be one enough, enough of those moments because, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do the good stuff eventually. We'll, we'll turn back around. People say that about drinking, about losing weight, about eating clean, about exercising, about working harder, reading more books, meditating, being healthy, sleeping better, like literally for all their lives. There is no tomorrow. It's like how you act today, but in a weird way without like with the thought of the, the long term that you wanted. I did this practice, you know, on, on the left hand, like there's a double, double sided page, right? Of a, of a journal like, like this. So a double sided page. And on the left side, I wrote about what I want my future wife to be like. Her family, family, especially father that I respect. Parents are together, obviously. The mother admires and respects the father. They're still polarized. The mother's still attractive. They're successful and they're wealthy family. They're in like my like work like class like of like economic si financial situation. And then her history, zero sexual past, literally nothing. Some teenage crus crushes and like kisses when she's like 13 years old, like kissing a, a boy is fine, but literally nothing like actually sexual. Beautiful, feminine energy. She either really wants to be like a housewife and a full-time mother, or she has like a really cute, wholesome job that she like really, really enjoys. She's positive, happy, giggly. She's warm. Her friends have all got similar values. And I've, I've, you know, I'm gonna tell you the truth, but I wrote here, her friends, no hoes, no men. A lot of guys won't ever say this out loud, but you probably feel it inside of you. It's just like I do when I told you that like a woman's sexual past is like literally the most disgusting thing that I could think of. You probably agree with that, even though it sounds horrible to say that. It's like, it, this is something that is truly authentic and, and real and honest to us. And we're, we're just, we're targeted at, like in this modern day as men to accept degeneracy and just think like, no, 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 you, you can't, you know? And this, this guy's out there, even my friends who, who say like, oh no, but you've got to use like, you know, the, the math, you know, let's say that she slept with 10 guys and she's 24 years old. And that just means that she slept with like one and a half guys per year. It's not about some, like some math that you're trying to do. It's the fact that she's like, bro, eight times, 10 times of this is like, you don't want that. If the best case scenario, right? This this is unrealistic. People will say this. Oh, but okay. So you want a beautiful girl who's pure, and you, you know you want all these things, but you're not that great, Hamlet. But the thing is, right? Best case scenario. This is the magic of thinking big. Because why would you settle with something like this of, of the woman that you're literally thinking? Okay, she is like the one. And you're still not gonna have the thing of like, yeah, yeah, she's like, you know, she's the only one I can ever love her or anything because of course it, it, you know, it's still valuable to think to yourself like, yeah, you know, I'm still like quite high value. I can still attract women and everything. But since this is the most important decision, why would you settle with this? There's a lot of people online on, on the other end of this, of like the people who could comment underneath this and everything. And you know, I've got like some good intellectual friends who say this and they're like, oh no, but this is like unrealistic and stuff. You've got to lower your standards. But for me, I think like, but why would you? With something as serious as your long-term relationship, like the thing is, this what I've this list. I'm not going to read you all of it, but it seems crazy and unrealistic. This is like every guy's perfect woman, right? But obviously, with like my sort of individual tastes and everything, right? And so every guy wants her, of course, right? But I'm not trying to just get her right now. For your like dream family, your dream woman, why wouldn't you just wait five years, ten years, like? I enjoy building myself anyway. And of course, no woman's perfect. I'm not expecting her to. I expect her to have like flaws. I expect her to make mistakes and stuff, of course, right? So that this isn't like unrealistic. This is just like very unlikely. But is that not the, the standard that you should set for your future wife? That it's very unlikely to meet a woman like that. That she is literally, quite literally, a one in a hundred thousand or a one in a million or a one in, in seven billion. Is that not the point? So why not set that standard so high and think to yourself right now, this is your page of motivation. All those goals that you've set right now, okay? This is your page of motivation and I'm not saying to do this for your wife. But if you've put down you know, the, the details, if you desire the kind of wife who I would imagine would be like a good woman, then what she would want from a husband 
would develop you really well. So it's not like you're doing this for her, but in a sense, like that's not even a bad thing. And you know, some people say like, oh, don't do things for women. It's like, bro, do things for your wife. Don't, don't be so crazy in the Sigma male thing either on the opposite end of the spectrum. Like do things for your wife, bro. What the fuck? Like, okay, your wife wants a, a husband who's not sick, who, who's physically fit. It's like, okay, you wanted to be physically fit anyway, but the fact that your wife, future wife would be attracted to that's even just a plus. The fact that you can literally imagine a woman who's so high quality that now it's like you 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 have a smile on your face when you think about her whilst you're out on a run thinking that, yep, she's, she's probably into running too. Now these things are your benefit. You're doing them for yourself. But of course it's like your wife is for yourself as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like she's for you. So it's like it's all for you at the end of the day. This then becomes a nice like bit of direction for you and a guide setter. It's a very quick practice to then think, okay, the girl that I'm dating right now, or the girl that I'm kind of interested in, is she like this? And usually you're bullshitting yourself if you have to do any level of thinking for it. Usually you know within a second, but if you need to, then you can like flip over to the next page and write the same details about the girl that you're dating or the girl that you're thinking about and then put her in comparison to the, this perfect scenario. And of course, pretty much no woman's ever gonna match up, which sounds like crazy. But that's the whole point. The whole point is that like, you get married once and then you have like this family once. It only needs to happen once. So the fact that it's not happening right now isn't that terrible. It's just, okay, we're delaying gratification. And then comes the interesting part. This is what we want and we won't settle for it. So we won't get into relationships then because there's no point getting into a relationship with a woman that doesn't meet this criteria because then you're just coping, right? You're literally just choosing the short-term pleasure, but it's going to come back and hurt you because of this fucking sticky an analogy that I showed you, not only for you, but also for her. And it's a huge distraction, mental distraction. Like, you know, the amount of focus and time and money that you spend dating and like, you don't realize it, right? The one week that I've been back here and I've, I've acted as if I was almost like single, even though I was still like, you know, like dating the, the same girl that I, I have been for a while. I'm, you know, still texting her and stuff. She lives in a different part of the UK. That one week, it's just been a week since I've been back in the UK, has been probably the most productive, most focused, most peaceful of my life so far. Just because it's almost felt like I'm on, like I'm on monk mode at this point. But this thing's slightly been nagging me in the back. It's like, I have to just cut ties. And I knew it inside of me and I just didn't want to admit it because, you know, it's like a horrible thing to go through a breakup. Technically, I'm going through a breakup right now. And the first thing I did was just quick, turn on the camera, get some views, guys. Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm genuinely not even doing this for views. Like, I just thought that this was a really important lesson. I was just going to go outside and go for like a run or do some exercise to try and use some energy. But I thought actually sitting down and recording would also use the energy. Like, because I'm almost... I'm recording this for you, but I'll be honest, I'm also recording it for me because I need to like say these things. I need to express it to like someone because I'm feeling all this. And this is very controversial things in this, in this modern day, but this is how literally all of our generations before us, our great grandparents, this is how they've all done it. They all just prioritize like family, like the, the real relationship they'd get into. And so why do you think every generation before us got married and had children at such a young age. There's two reasons, right? One is this, because, you know, they just wanted to, like, meet the wife. They, they, they met her. It was it was what they wanted, and they got to have children. And because they, they were religious, they didn't get to have sex before marriage. They actually wanted to wait for it, because that's, like, the right thing to do in the eyes of God. It's the right thing to do for other reasons, which I'll tell you about. But the other was also just financially, like, they were able to get married at age 19 and get a house and stuff, right? So there's, like, two big reasons. Like, cultural is probably another one. Everyone's degenerate these days, and we think that at age 18, you should go like fuck around because it's just a bit of fun and everything but let's say you've got this like okay best case scenario this unrealistic thing that everyone's gonna say you're crazy you know look at this guy he wants this this and this and this in a woman they're gonna write articles about me saying yeah he's crazy he's sexist he's misogynist but like we're all around allowed our preferences aren't we of course we are, right? You, you can't say to women, okay, you're allowed this, but then you can't say it to men, like, oh, no, no, you, you're, you're misogynist for wanting this. I'm allowed what I'm allowed as long as I'm respectful about it, right? Once you know what you want in your wife and your family, the best case scenario then for you, if you really want to be like the man that, like you're, you want to hit your potential, it's for you not to casually date girls. It's for you to not casually sleep with girls in the meantime. It's not because that, that will like detriment, that will be to the detriment of your future family because it will distract you 
It will take away from you working so hard to build for your future family. It will, you know, use some of your stickiness. And, and this is definitely still true for men, okay? I think for women, they're, like, their every pullback counters two, for example, or like 150% or something. But this definitely still happens to men. I'm telling you from first-hand experience, this happens to men, okay? Don't listen to anyone who tells you, like, casual sex as a guy doesn't damage you at all because they're either lying to you or they genuinely just don't know. I'm being honest to you and I know it does damage you. It's, it doesn't serve me at all right now in a business money sense for me to say this. It doesn't, it, like, it literally, I, I'm, like, losing out on the message that I've, I've put out in loads of videos. It does damage you. Of course it does. I've said this before in a bunch of videos as well. It's, like, it's not good for you. I, I've wanted to take a step back from this. And it's, like, I've, I won't go into details, but, yeah. It would be best for you, once you know what you want in your future wife, to wait for her. To wait for her. And not just, you know, like sitting around waiting and stuff, but as in like waiting in, in terms of not getting with other girls, as in not just like sleeping around and everything. You might wonder, okay, well, how about, okay, I know my future wife's, you know, okay, this is what she's going to be like, and I'll probably attract her in five years or something. But how about I just like fuck some girls in the meantime? But then again, okay, that's going to be the stickiness thing. It's going to be a, a just huge, you don't realize it up until you take a step out and you really stop thinking about girls for some time, bro. Like the amount of like peace and mental clarity you get, like I'm no longer open to dating, bro. I, even though I've been single for like five minutes, I'm like officially celibate. I'm officially on monk mode and I'm going to fucking destroy this period of monk mode with my goals. Literally just focus on business and health and learning and teaching. Lit bro, and, and also faith is, I'm going to add one to my little page here, like faith, like God, like I, I actually want to drastically become way more religious religious because I think this is the right way to live. I've been saying this for like a year but not really following my own advice because it requires sacrifice. Because it requires us to sacrifice the short-term pleasure for the long-term gain. And that's incredibly scary. I'll say it to you. It's incredibly scary. Maybe you're listening to this hyped up, but in the back of your mind, you know for a fact what you have to sacrifice. Maybe there's a girl that you plan to meet within the next few days and you're thinking, okay, if I was really going to follow this advice, I'd cancel on her because she's not my future wife, but I could get a nut. And you know, like, ejaculation feels good. I love to ejaculate, like a little monkey. I think the best case scenario is what David said, which is that you go on to monk mode and you just ruthlessly work on yourself and you just don't really entertain women. And, and this is going to be a little bit, this is the, like, I don't think any of this video is toxic so far. Honestly, I, I don't think any of this is toxic. I think this is like actually really important. I think this is really like wholesome in, in like a weird way. It, it's only seen as toxic for the modern day, but I'm about to actually say the first toxic part of this video, which is that I'm going to reframe this just for, I don't know why, but just the phrase reject women seems to feel quite powerful for me because I've been on, you know, celibacy, semen retention, uh, monk mode, no fap and stuff before. But I'm going to tell you right now, when I've been on these periods where I'm not dating, I'm not having sex and everything, there's two types of like ways that you do this. One is when you reject women consciously and you think, okay, no, 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 I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not even interested. You're not even thinking about them. That feels totally blissful. It feels like literally like this huge, like, like 30% of your brain's just unlocked. Like if, you, if you've never experienced the, th the the life of genuinely rejecting, like um, honestly, most guys haven't, right? Even if, you, if you're on semen retention and monk mode, most guys actually haven't because of, there's a caveat to this. But it feels like literally your brain's just went up 30%, which feels amazing. But the second kind of version of this, of, you know, like, okay, yeah, I'm on monk mode, I'm on semen retention, is that you're saying these things, but you can't actually like get girls. Like you're not actually the one rejecting them. Like you're still kind of like, if there was a girl bent over in front of you, you'd do it. That's like the second phase. And I've been in both, right? I've been, I've been like throughout the last like two years, I've, I've been into both. I'm telling you right now, the first one, which is literally, okay, it's your option. And if there was literally a girl like bent, you'd be like, oh, what the fuck? Like get away from me, stinky. Like, and you'd go do your work, right? And the, the, for the second one, for the guys who are like kind of saying like, yeah, I'm on semen retention, but like they would if they could, you don't get the benefit. And so for me, it's like, it's a conscious decision to just reject women. And I think I will, I will be totally honest to you because this kind of kills like a bit of like, you know, the, the sort of hype of the video. 
I think I'm very like privileged and biased to be able to say this because you've got to be at like a certain caliber of man. Like I'm not like, you know, some amazing guy. I've, I've got so much more progress to make, like literally a, a lifetime more of progress, but I have more than enough options. I have more than enough, like literally inbound women messaging me on Instagram and like, you know, attraction from girls. And I'm not even like trying to boast. It's just literally just a pure fact of like just something honest I'm telling you. And so for me, it's a conscious thought of rejecting, which feels really like powerful. And, and it's probably for some toxic reason. It's probably because it puts me above them or something but it's it's serving me and it's not really hurting them because I'm gonna do it in like a respectful way that's like my mindset right now I've literally wrote it on my wall just reject women just keep the focus for yourself straight away I was like I, was, I started to hype up a little bit and I was like okay this is this is actually like like this feels right finally this actually feels like I, I'm going onto the like the the right path here that I've got massive goals and, and the goals that I do have like the direction that I'm taking everything in it is huge. The ROI of, of me focusing is huge. And I just want the, the peace of not casually dating anymore. I've not been on dating apps. I'm not messaging girls and like them driving me to the park so I can fuck them in the woods and everything, bro. I'm done. I'm done, bro. <laughs> the idea is that once you clarify what your future wife is like, you honestly just go on to monk mode and stay celibate till she finds you. I don't think that we're supposed to, like, you know, like, this is a common red pill thing. Like, I don't think we're supposed to chase women. I think, like, women are supposed to chase the men. And what... The idea behind marriage is very interesting in a, in a religious setting. The idea is that religion has told us, like God has, has told his followers, that you should not have sex before marriage. And that's, it seems crazy, you know, to, to atheists, like literally it seems crazy, right? To a lot of people. And the reason perhaps why it's always felt crazy to me and, you know, it's almost felt like lame and everything. It's, it's because you've just wanted it right now without realizing the consequences. You know, you've wanted it in the short term without knowing, okay, the long term is that it's literally like when we talk about the modern world and degeneracy, sex is the most important part of that, right? We, we can talk about, you know, the health problems and stuff, but like sex and like in relation to that porn and TikTok girls, like literally post them like softcore child porn and stuff. Like that's all related to sex, right? That's all essentially about opening up sex and allowing it outside of marriage. And that's the reason why all that stuff is happening. But it's powerful because if you, in my perception right now, if you wait till marriage, even though you found the woman that you want to, you know, who's your wife and everything, you found like a really good woman and you know, you're just horny and stuff and she is as well, but you wait. It means like, it's just, I can't even explain it, but it just, I can tell that that's it. That's the right way. This is not coming from some guy who's speculating or anything. This is coming from some guy who's like literally experienced like what the modern degenerate world has to offer. And I'm on the other side telling you now, like it's bro, it's like, it's not that good. And it scares me saying this because I'm going to be held accountable to this. If I start being a degenerate a month from now, it's like, it, you know, it's going to get put into the light. Like, oh yeah, Hamza made this video now. Oh, look at this Hamza, like you know, zooming in on the, the, the girl's face or something. If I get caught in public with a girl or something like... It's a huge sacrifice that you have to make, but it's a sacrifice that you're making for your family. And, and I think I think a man makes this kind of sacrifice for his family. Because I don't think these hookups and these short-term relationships serve you. And you might, the final thing you can say is like, oh, but what about practice? You know, like what if like you actually need to be good with girls? And again, like I, I don't have a good answer for that. I, I'm just privileged and like biased because I'm already good with girls. And so it's like me taking a step back from dating and thinking, yep, I'm not going to date any girls. I'm not even going to like uh, think about girls or anything like that. It's like, that's fine. That's fine for me. I'm still going to be good with girls. Even five years from now, even with no practice, it's like, I, I know that I can. I know how to speak to a woman. It's like, w once you've unlocked the, the I don't, not even the code or the secret, once you've just unlocked like the ability to attract women, it's like the skills always there, like learning a bike and you can take years off the dating market, but it's like, it's always there. And I imagine a few more years of even more success and development, especially my character, is gonna make me even more irresistible. And that sounds like cringe and stuff, but like, yeah. I'm certainly not telling you 
to just follow me exactly with what I'm doing here. This is a very important point because th this is like the point of life that I've gotten to now, but it's taken me like literally over a year of thinking about this stuff to get here. And so you might not be here just yet, but just be wary of the consequences of, of dating women and having sex with women that you know aren't your wife. Just be wary. And just keep in mind that success does not equal, you know, just hooking up with a girl and having, oh, I got my dick sucked. That's not success, bro. The real success is having like a beautiful wife who you do that sexual stuff with five times a day for the rest of your life. And of course that's again unrealistic, but it's like, bro, every goal that you set is unrealistic, isn't it? As, as men on like self-improvement, men becoming stronger, every goal that we set's unrealistic. So this is gonna be people saying like, oh, but this is unrealistic, you know? They're all like, but of course it is, bro. The life that I live is unrealistic. I was broke, I was claiming benefits from the government two and a half, three years ago, and now like, Everything we, we do on this pathway is unrealistic, right? The, the hooks of the internet, the nerds of Silicon Valley try to grip us in their addiction of porn and video games and, and social media, and we got out. That should have been impossible. That should have been unrealistic. Everything we do is unrealistic, so don't let people define like this goal like this, like, you know, the woman that you want. as like, oh, I doubt you'd get her, bro. That, that's just, that's just, you should be more realistic, bro. Like, there's nothing wrong with a girl who's had a threesome. There's nothing wrong with a girl who split her soul with a ra random guy that she met from Tinder, bro. The reason why people say this stuff, like, you know, I'm saying now, but like, the reason why I think men defend women who have been promiscuous is because those men, those, you know, casually sexual guys and everything, they're not looking to actually have anything serious with those women anyway. That's how, like, little they view them, even though th these men are seen as, like, more progressive your, your respect for a woman's value seems to go up infinitely higher when you actually want to consider her for something like marriage, not just a hookup. And then it's like, okay, then you start to think okay, of how valuable like she is and how like her stickiness is. The modern world wants to take this away from us and they have done a very good job. They've convinced us that this constant repetition of just pulling back, like this one's still on my hand, bro. This one's still sticky. Where's the, where's the other piece gone? Yeah, this little, this piece here and this piece all dried up, all mucky. There's like a tiny little bit of stick left on, on this one. Oh, congrats. This is like when the, the couple, like, you know, some 30 year old girl who's been really sexually active and that she finally gets married and the guy feels like so happy to marry her. This is what he's got. This is the, the result of the sexual revolution. This is what we wanted. And we've, we've been sold the lie to think the family, religion, faith, marriage, children, are the wrong things. I don't feel ready for for children, but I'm beginning to maybe think that that's maybe, again, it's like modern day propaganda. Our parents and grandparents and great, like every man in our bloodline had children aged 18 to 20, every man. And here we are like 28 years old, like, you know, I've been dating her for five years and I'm still not sure. Certainly don't rush into it, you know, I'm not saying to rush in, certainly don't make mistakes and stuff. You've got to have your own vetting process, maybe that can be a different um, video I can make and everything, but... Yeah, man. Sacrifices need to be made for your long term. Whilst I'm very... It's hard for me to even say I'm like upset because I just know this is right. I dated her for nine months. It was the best relationship that I've had so far, easily. I've learned a lot, she learned a lot, we developed a lot, we went all around the world. And I'm extremely grateful for that. But you must make sacrifices for the long-term vision of your life. 
That's the core components of self-improvement and self-improvement has served us so well that I don't think we should defy it when it comes to relationships. Delaying gratification changed our lives forever and so we should delay gratification when it comes to even women that we love. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it.